Hi, it's Katrina. Number 10. Iram of the Pillars There is supposedly a legendary lost city hiding somewhere underneath the desert sands of Arabia. This place has been lusted over for centuries, searched for by famous explorers like Sir Ranulf Fiennes and even Lawrence of Arabia. The glorious city in the sand is still out there somewhere just waiting for someone to find it. And when it's found, legend has it that the city will be the grandest ruin anyone has ever discovered. This lost city has several names. Some call it Iram of the Pillars, while Lawrence of Arabia came up with the name the Atlantis of the Sands. The oldest real evidence that a mysterious metropolis is out there buried in the desert comes from the Ebla Tablets. These tablets date back to 2500 BC and were found in the ancient city of Ebla in Syria. There are 1,800 complete clay tablets and 4,700 fragments, and it's in these ancient inscriptions that a city named Iram is mentioned. If the city is as old as the tablets suggest, over 4,500 years old, it's not unreasonable to think it could have been buried beneath the shifting desert sands and forgotten. Locals say the city was destroyed by a natural disaster as punishment by their wrathful god. Iram of the Pillars was allegedly swallowed by the desert. This could have been a sandstorm or a tsunami. Experts aren't sure because they have never technically found the city. Number 9. The Jinn of the Steppes Chand Bowery is a place of exquisite architecture in Rajasthan, India. Rajasthan has been called the most colorful state in all of India, even the most vibrant. The history here is rich and goes back through bloodlines of kings and queens thousands of years to the Stone Age. One of the most jaw-dropping pieces of architecture in Rajasthan is Chand Bowery, a haunted stepwell with a legendary past. The stepwell is located in the village of Abhaneri. It's over 100 feet deep, and researchers think it was most likely built in the 8th century. But what makes this place so mysterious is that nobody is entirely sure who built it. Archaeologists have never found direct evidence of the individual who commissioned the construction of this monumental stepwell. It's believed, based on nothing but speculation, that the stepwell was named after a local ruler 1,200 years ago. Its original purpose likely had to do with religious and ceremonial activity. The stepwell would have acted as both a watering hole and a place of pilgrimage. People from the surrounding villages would have come here in the dry season to soak in what little water remained in the well, and they would have participated in religious festivals. But let's get to the part about the legend. According to the locals, the reason archaeologists have never found any evidence of the stepwell in historical records is because it was built in a single night. Locals say the one responsible for the impossible feat was a jinn, or a genie. It crafted all 3,500 steps and 13 stories of walls and galleries, and to this day, it haunts its own creation. Number 8. The Garden of the Hesperides In Greek mythology, the Hesperides were nymphs of the evening, creatures of pure golden sunlight. Their father was the titan Atlas, and their mother was the goddess of darkness, Nyx. The three Hesperides were said to dwell in a mysterious garden far away to the west of Greece, where they sang songs and tended to the golden apples that grew from lovely flowering trees. The garden was supposed to be one of the most beautiful places in the world. It was in the great golden apple tree grove that Zeus married Hera, and they became king and queen of the gods. The Hesperides were the divine beings sent to take care of the grove and ensure the health of the golden fruit. While this all may seem like just another fantasy out of Greek myth, many experts believe the Garden of the Hesperides may have been a real place. Like so many locations from mythology, famous garden was a faraway land that became over-embellished by Greek writers. Historians believe the golden apples referred to in the myths were really just oranges. The fruitful land was most likely Portugal, which to the Greeks must have seemed like a truly spectacular paradise rich with tasty fruits. Number 7. Mount Fuji Mount Fuji is more than just the highest peak in Japan. The mountain is also a stratovolcano made of lava and ash, 60 miles from Tokyo at an elevation of 12,388 feet. 
It has been a legendary landmark in Japan for thousands of years. Its last major eruption was on December 26, 1707. The volcano is now dormant, with a very slim chance that it will erupt again in the near future. Mount Fuji is also steeped in legend and folklore. Its name itself is a derivative of Fuji, the ancient Aino people's goddess of fire. Women weren't allowed to climb the mountain until the 1860s because there was a fear that the fire goddess was too possessive. She would supposedly kill any woman who tried to scale the mountain in a fit of jealous rage. But Fuji isn't the only deity connected to the mountain. Sengen is the mountain goddess of Mount Fuji, and she used to have a temple at the very summit. It was said that any traveler with an impure heart or ill intentions would be kicked off the top by Sengen herself. Number 6. The Medieval Paradise The legend of the utopia known as Cocaine first appeared in the 12th century in Europe. It was around 1250 AD that a French book was published describing a mythical medieval paradise with such abundance it was like heaven. This mysterious place had a seemingly unlimited amount of food. The people who lived there bathed in luxury and had all the physical comforts you could imagine. Every whim and pleasure was taken care of immediately, and their hands grew soft from the ease of their existence. Historians are fairly sure that Cockaine, like the lost city of Atlantis, was nothing more than a mythical utopia dreamed up by medieval peasants to escape their own miserable lives. And while the mythical land of plenty has never been found, a lot of places were named Cockaine later on in history. For example, the Dutch village of Cockingen named itself after Cockaine when they established farms and desired to be seen as a town of culinary prosperity. And now for number 5, but first want to give a big shout out to Glennis Clark and Rubal Dasgupta. Thanks so much for watching. If you are new here, welcome and be sure to subscribe for more videos like these. Number 5. The City of Troy There is no city more legendary or more famous in the 21st century than Troy. This city is shrouded in more mysterious myths than just about any other city from the ancient world. And yet, it is also a very real place. The biggest issue for historians is trying to separate fact from fiction. In the ancient legends of Troy, the city was besieged for 10 years by the Greek army before it was eventually captured. The Greek king Agamemnon started the war himself when Paris, the son of King Priam of Troy, kidnapped Helen, queen of Sparta. It was a love triangle gone wrong, and in the legends is infused with all kinds of godly mischief and intervention. In reality, Troy is a real city on the northwest coast of Turkey. It's also known as Hisarlik, and it really was ruled over by someone named King Priam. This became a fact in the 19th century when German archaeologist Heinrich Schliemann conducted excavations and found hard evidence. 2,700 years ago when the myth started, Troy was a real city ruled over by the very same man from the stories. But was there really a Trojan War? This is the subject of great debate between scholars. At the time the war allegedly took place, around 1200 BC, the Mycenaean civilization of Greece was collapsing. The Trojan War could have been one of the last things the Mycenaeans did before they were destroyed. It also could have contributed to their collapse by stretching their army thin and depleting their resources. Number 4. Thule In the 4th century BC, the Greek explorer Pythias returned to Athens after a long voyage across the sea. He claimed that during his travels, he came across an island far in the north where the sun never set. He called this place Thule, a mysterious northern land covered in ice where the wind was so cold it could freeze the lungs. Pythias described the residents of this frigid wasteland as barbarians with fair complexions and sandy blonde hair. The legendary land of Thule was almost definitely a real place. Pythias was one of the most reliable of the early Greek explorers. He is famous for being one of the first to document the effects of the moon on the tides. He was also one of the first Greeks to map the coastline of Great Britain. There is no reason to doubt his claims, as he didn't seem to embellish much and always recorded exactly what he saw. 
The land of Thule was supposedly located across from the Scottish islands and west of Scandinavia. That would put Thule as either being Iceland or Greenland. For a Greek to reach Iceland and see the phenomenon of the Arctic summer when the sun never sets, it really would have been like arriving in a legendary land. And as the years went on and more explorers went in search of Thule, more explorers returned to places like Rome with tales of an island of barbarians living in perpetual daylight. Number 3. Zerzura Not far from the Arabian Desert, just a few hundred miles to the west, lies the Sahara Desert. And within this great expanse of sandy waves and big blue skies, there is yet another mysterious lost city. This one is called Zerzura, and it's supposedly somewhere in either Egypt or Libya. It was described by an anonymous treasure seeker in the 15th century. He wrote in his logs that the city of Zerzura was a pale, shimmering place in the desert with a huge carved bird on its gate. The treasure hunter claimed the city was extremely wealthy, with every wall of every building as white as a dove. He also referred to it as the oasis of little birds and the resting place of a slumbering king and queen. By every account, this fabled place was a true oasis society. The treasure hunter clearly described a grand city surrounding a desert paradise in the middle of an otherwise barren landscape. But these days, nobody is sure how real Zerzura is. Legends of the city go back to at least 484 BC, when the Greek historian Herodotus called it the City of Dionysus and described it as dwelling deep in the desert sands. Other myths say the oasis is guarded by huge giants who keep all stray wanderers clear of the gates. For thousands of years, there have been rumors of this place somewhere in the Sahara. In modern times, the rumors have persisted. The English Egyptologist John Gardner Wilkinson published a book in 1835 about how a local herder discovered the city by accident while searching for a lost camel. Count Laszlo del Masi, a Hungarian pilot, led a search for the city in the 1930s. And while he did indeed discover a secret oasis nobody had ever seen before, hiding in a remote stretch of the Sahara, there were no ruins to speak of. Number 2. Norumbega Norumbega is a legendary settlement in North America that may or may not have existed. Looking at early geographic outlines of North America from the 16th century, when Europeans began to colonize the land, we can see a place clearly labeled as Norumbega. Some accounts of early European explorers even say that the houses of Norumbega were built with pillars of gold and that the people who lived there wore crowns of pearls about their heads. The name Norumbega appears on maps of America as early as 1529. Experts say the name comes from the Algonquin language that was spoken in New England before Europeans arrived. It means quiet stretch of water. But whether this place was a settlement, a Native American city, or just a region, nobody has any idea. There was clearly something in New England, just south of Acadia, that was important enough for cartographers to include it in their maps. In the 19th century, the town of Bangor named their municipal hall Norumbega Hall. In the later part of the 19th century, the American scientist Eben Norton Horsford suggested Norumbega may have been a Norse settlement on the Charles River. It could be that the Norse were wiped out decades earlier before the other Europeans arrived. Number 1. Grianan of Aliak Grianan of Aliak is one of the most legendary places in all of Ireland, and one of the most mystical. These days, very little remains of the original fortress. Sitting atop the Greenan Mountain at 801 feet above sea level in County Donegal is the crumbling ruin of a ring fort built in the 6th century AD. The hilltop was once the seat of the great Kingdom of Aliak, who ruled much of Ireland until the 12th century. That was when they started losing their grip on their lands. The Aliak had much of their territory taken from them by the invading Normans. Then their hilltop fortress was smashed apart by the High King of Ireland. But before they had their hilltop destroyed, the Kingdom of Aliak ruled most of Ireland for 600 long years. That's more than double the amount of time the United States has even been a country. Rhiannon of Aliak, their most important fortress, 
was said to have been built by the Dagda himself, the father god of Ireland. It was said the Dagda fought a long and horrible war against the Fomori, a supernatural race from Irish mythology. Once he had beaten back the ugly and monstrous creatures, he built the fortress as a grave to his son, who had fallen in battle. Thanks for watching. Which of these incredible legendary places did you like the most? Let me know in the comments below. And be sure to hit that subscribe button and come back soon. Bye!